Today's message is a little different because today I want to go to war. Um, I told you I had uh, an announcement that I wanted to give to you. I received a call from a very dear and precious woman of God who loves Jesus Christ. Uh, she's a personal friend. She's a senior woman of God. I met her through the late, great Bishop Dean Nelson. We connected, you know, you, the people you meet, you can connect with right away. We connected right away. And she, she just loves Jesus. She called me the other day, and uh, it was a, maybe a day or so before I could get to her call. And before I got to the call, you know how the phone can give a, a printout of the message that's left. So I, 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 I read the message, and, it, and upon reading it, I took the message and showed it to my wife. And this was... Uh, Friday before we left to go to Spartanburg, South Carolina to be with the saints at Spartanburg and to be with the South Carolina district. And when I read the letter, the, the message, I immediately shared with my wife she, uh, and the message um, was informing me of a group of people who have decided to target me. I showed it to my wife, and I didn't shrug it off. I didn't treat it like it was nothing. I did what I do with anything that I take seriously. I went downstairs in our home, and I went to the prayer room, and I laid it before God. On my way to South Carolina Friday night, Elder Williams was with me. He was driving me. I called that precious woman of God, and she said to me, Bishop, there's a, uh, there's a couple. They were in the trans community. I think she said, Robert, did I get it right? The man was a trans woman, and the woman was a trans man. That's some couple, ain't it? Talking about mixed up. Talking about trading places. I need you all to hear me. And with this, the good news about them is they got delivered. The Lord set them free. Um, if the American media had to tell you about these people being free, they, you would never know. For the American media treat ex-trans people and ex-homosexuals like they don't exist. There's a march that takes place every year in Washington with people who were in that lifestyle, who have been delivered. They get no coverage. Because rather than the media admitting that Jesus saves and that it is a lifestyle of choice, the media will not cover them. They are truly non-existing people even though they exist by the hundreds of thousands because the Lord is a deliverer. Amen. In fact, he delivers to the point that you never know someone who may have been in that lifestyle may be sitting in service next to you. And they're just as sweetly saved and changed and delivered as you are. Jesus saves. But these people, having been delivered, they're still on the call list. So they got a call. And um, they told them, they called them by name. And they knew that this woman of God 
knew me and really appreciated our ministry and we have a, a wonderful friendship. So they told her that the trans people said that they're going to target me because they're upset with me. They don't like the things that I've been saying. And she said, now I don't know what that means. I don't know yet, if I find out more, I'll tell you, how they intend to target you. They may show up at places where you are. They may heckle you or whatever. And then she said this, you know, these are people full of hormones that should not be there. Men taking estrogen and women taking testosterone. And you know, that, that, when you're putting something in your body that ain't supposed to be there, it'll make you crazy. But these people, these people, they, they, they need Jesus. They messed up. Anytime everything about you that you look at in the mirror tells you that you are a man, and there's a voice in your head telling you you're a woman, you believe that voice. Something's wrong. And vice versa. You're standing there. Uh, yes. And, and you're saying that you're a man and you're a lady. And, um, and you have a womb. And then there are other things that you don't have. Say amen. amen. So, said that uh, they probably wouldn't appreciate me saying this. But, um, um, they said they're going to target me. And then they said this, and I kind of I kind of got a chuckle out of this one. And, and, and she said, they said, they don't like all the stuff that I've been saying at the school board meetings either. I said, that's John. <laughs> and they, 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 they want to target me. I, I, I talked about this uh, in South Carolina. I'm, I'm telling you this because <clears throat> I'm following the formula that the Bible gives us. So you don't have to come up with a new formula if you serve the Lord. The formula is already written. When, when Peter and John was threatened, the Bible says in Acts chapter number 4 and verse 23, the Bible says, and being let go, they went back to their own company. And reported unto them all the things that the chief priests and the Pharisees have said. Chief priests and the elders had told them. So I'm telling my company. You are my company. The saints at Spartanburg was my company. Saints all over the world who love Jesus and believe the scriptures are a part of my company. And my prayer to you is that you pray for me. And you pray that, um, now you're not part of my company if your position in hearing something like that is, well, he need to stop saying that stuff. That's not the right response. If you read on down in Acts, the people broke out. I think it's a little warm here. They're fanning hard, Robert. Robert. Robert's trying to burn you all up. The people, the people broke out in Acts. says, why does the heathen rage? And the people imagined vain things. And the saints understood that who was wrong was the people issuing the threats. Not Peter and John. And the Bible says, and they were filled. They got filled again. They got refilled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak the word of God even more boldly. I say to the trans community and to all of them, if you think that I'm going to change my doctrine at all, you have the wrong preacher. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. 
I'm not going to operate in the spirit of get evenism or, or get revenge and make every sermon about them. And I'm not going to operate in the spirit of cowardice and all of a sudden not say anything anymore. You are wrong. <clears throat> Your problem, trans community, is not with me. Your problem is with, with God. And you're in trouble with God because the Bible says, Woe be unto him that strive who argues with his maker. Your maker, brother, made you a man. Your maker, sister, made you a woman. And you can't unmake what God has made. No matter what surgery, no matter how you look, no matter how many wigs they put on you, I don't care if when they finish, you look like a cover girl. You are still a man. Didn't they say trust the science? Ain't that what they say? Aren't we supposed to trust biology? Check that DNA. Swab the old mouth. I don't care if you you standing there looking like a queen. You are, you are a he. And a messed up one at that. And uh, I'm not changing. I received this letter. I saw it this morning. And I'll read it to you because I got permission from the writer to read this. I don't assume every communication that comes to me in a text or an email is for public consumption. So if you would send me something, even if I wanted to share it, I would get permission first. He says, as always, sir, we continue to follow your ministry and we're encouraged by the sound doctrine and your stand for truth and holiness. That you continue to deliver, uh, that you continue to deliver week after week. I was watching online, the online service when you shared about the transgender community wanting to make a target of you. My wife, Tricia, and I, and all of the saints in Alaska are praying for you, your wife, your family, and the upper room church. Alaska is praying for the saints. We understand that the enemy loves to speak words to try to cast fear, cowardliness, and intimidation in the hearts of God's people. To eventually silence us or cause us to compromise this gospel truth. But just like you personally encouraged me when we met two years ago at Acts 6 4 conference, I want to return the encouragement to you, sir. We believe the God of the Bible, and here's God of the Bible in all caps. And his word alone is our shield and buckler. And by the way, they're watching right now. And he said this, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. For their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Then he quotes Psalms 91, verse 9 through 11. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Cheston and Patricia McCray, God bless the saints. God bless the saints from Alaska. I got a text from Bishop Edward Cook. Bishop Cook sent me the text and said, My brother Bishop Wooden, I want you to know that I am in prayer against any and all attacks against you by the enemy. We hold you up before the Lord. I shot a text to him this morning. I said, Bishop Cook, can I share it with the saints? And he told me, by all means. Already, saints 
uh, circling the wagon. Uh, up room, we're not changing. But now you're seeing why I gave, I said what I said. This sermon can include you or it can exclude you. It depends on you. You may say to yourself, Wood, that's too much for me. We understand. But for the rest of us. We're going on in the Lord. I, I'm, I'm preaching now. Now stay with me, stay with me. So you never know what you're going to get. I have this in my hand. Help expose. Look at this. Help expose the far right's extreme intolerant agenda. And this is by a group called, um, what, is it, what is it, Right Wing Watch? Yeah. They watch people on the right. And they describe the far right as extreme and intolerant. Isn't it amazing that the people who preach tolerance always exclude Christianity? I mean, we're living in a day, this thing is messed up, where a illegal can murder a young lady, an illegal. Is in the country illegally. Slipped into the country. Illegally. And what does the media get out of get bent out of shape over? They get bent out of shape because the president called the illegal an illegal and that he didn't call them <clears throat> undocumented. But those same press people didn't had nothing to say about him killing that girl. And beating her head in, she's jogging and she's murdered. Lakin is murdered and beaten to, cr to crush her skull. That ain't the story. The story is the president called the alleged person who did it, the alleged, he called them illegal even though he's in the country illegally. See this, see, this is why I preach the Bible to you and talk to you about these things. See, all of this is an assault on truth and on biblical Christianity. These people are under the impression that reality can be changed based on what you call a thing. The behavior can remain the same. But if you call it something different, then it's something different. Boys can break in. Young men can steal cars. They can steal, uh, break in the Apple store and steal all the, the, the phones, the smartphones. But the story is not their thievery. The story is not their carjacking. The story is not them shooting each other dead in the street. The story is that someone called them thugs. I don't think you should have used the word thug. Thug is a dog whistle. What, what else do you call a person who breaks in, steals, breaks the law, shoot people, take your car? That's, that's, a, that's a thug. We're now calling without any actions being changed. Pedophiles, minor attractive persons. That's the title they want to give to a grown man who is sexually turned on looking at a five year old. That is a pervert, a, per, a pedophile, that's the devil, that's wicked, that's, a, that's wickedness to the core. But these people, the right wing watch kind of people, these are the kind of people who are into 
euphemisms. See, with us, we're into deliverance. See, you can call it whatever you used to call it. We just want to be able to say, and such were some of you. Such were. But they are into euphemisms. You don't change your behavior at all. We'll just call it something a little more palatable. But at the end of the day, you're still prostituting. You're still taking advantage of children and people. Uh, so now, we, now, it, now it's trafficking. And now we want to start calling illegals newcomers. There's something wrong with that. So now, I'm, listen, I'm in Isaiah. I'm in, says, when you go pre- I'm preaching now, I'm telling you. Because I want to pray for you. But I, see, one of the goals, and I've done this for years. Many of you just discovered it. Uh, and when we got on, online and stuff, and COVID brought it to the forefront. But for years, like 30, we were teaching here, teaching our ministers how to see the world through biblical lenses and how to see the scriptures played out in the things that are going on real time. Because the Bible is not a book of fairy tales. The Bible is more accurate than tomorrow morning's newspaper. And nothing will go on in society that the Bible has not already spoken to. And we're good at it. That's why they're trying to intimidate us. Now look at this, and I'm going to pray, and we're going to preach, and we're going to go home. I'm not going to preach to you all day. Look at this. Help expose the far right's extreme and intolerant agenda. Anti-LGBTQ pastor. John Amanchuku is creating an army of clones to rant at school board meetings. And this is by Kyle Mantella. <laughs> Mantella. All right. Last year, right wing pastor John Amanchuku generated. See, He's not a pastor. We've got to label him now. We've got to label him. He's far left. Far left. It's one of the problems they have with him being right wing, not far left, far right. Uh, right wing, ultra right wing. <laughs> he's a black guy. <laughs> See, they, all, they always want to point the, 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 the ultra right, the right. Uh, these are Klansmen. White people. Look at old John. They're talking about our God. My, and I, I love him. Amen. Our God. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. That's my son-in-law. He's a man of God. I love him. And uh, we were talking about it in the back, me and all the elders. All of us will stand shoulder to shoulder. And make war if we have to because we are not afraid. And he's not alone. Last year, right wing pastor John Amanchuku generated lots of media coverage by making appearances before North Carolina school boards to rant about the supposedly perverted books that were in the school board libraries. Supposedly perverted. They were the ones who wouldn't let him read from the books. All he did was show up, wait his turn. Oftentimes, he would have, if there were 30 speakers, he was the 30th. And when it was his time, turn, 
He got up, opened the books that they endorsed and read from them. And the school board said, you can't read that. You can't read that. No, 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 no. This is not, this is not fit. For, this, this goes against the dignity of this meeting. I, I thought it was, but you all support those books. You, you resist his attempt to get the books removed. Now you write this uh, piece of filth, this trash right here, and you call it supposedly perverted books that were available in school libraries. Buoyed by the praise he received from fellow right-wing activists, Amanchuku then decided to continue his efforts in the school board meetings in various states as part of a national school board tour. Recently, a man Chuku appeared. Uh, he was on the Eric Metaxas. Uh, the next stage of his crusade, here's what he said, will be involved in creating an army of clones. That's what they said, who can duplicate his performance in front of the school boards all over the nation. They, now check this out. Uh, um, this is a quote I'm working on a program called Cyclones 400 Amanchuku said I have told several times I've been told several times by parents by school board leaders by superintendents by teachers we need to find a way to duplicate you I told you he was a force multiplier I've been told you that I said it and any time you're doing a great work for the Lord, God's work is always too big for one man. And you know what God does? God raises up others to join that man in doing the work of the Lord. I think it's a fantastic idea. You know who else thinks that's a good idea? Jesus. Uh, Jesus said the harvest truly is plenteous. The laborers are few. Don't get me started. And so he's uh, going to organize and train men and women, white, black, Asian, Hispanic. All you got to do is, the requirement is you got to believe that children ought not to be reading porn and filth. Now, who has a problem with that? I want you to know, and he has a video out. Uh, we'll probably run it right to close the service. But I want you to come here, Elder. Um, he's going to tell it, 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 his own story when you see the video, what he's doing. But for the sake of time, you know, y'all like me to preach all day. But I want, I want, I want you, you're our company. And uh, we're not afraid. We're not going to stop. But here's what we do know, though. We do know that we need the prayers of the saints. And to be covered by the people of God. Hallelujah. See, because uh, uh, these people are crazy. The people who want to keep these books in the library, crazy probably not the right word. These people are evil. evil. They're evil. They got the devil in them. They're evil. But we serve a God who will put a fence around you. We serve a God who will protect you. And we're doing the Lord's work. We're doing the Lord's work at the school board meeting. We're doing the Lord's work here. I told the elders and the ministers here. I said, and, and, and with the work that, that's being done, what you're doing is just as important. Everybody's role yes, is a big role in this. Everybody. Today, the out front person may be this man. Tomorrow, it may be you. Everybody's role is important. And you know you're making headway when organizations begin to team up gang up and they start to trying to threaten you. Yeah. You know something's going on. So all who know the words of prayer, I want you to stand right now. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, get your mic. And uh, I want you 
praise the Lord, to pray a quick prayer for me and Elder Aman Chuku. Yes, sir. And, then, and in this prayer, we're praying that God will continue to use us, yes, bless us, yes, sir. and cover us, and not only us, but all yes, who are warriors for God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sure, well, look at these elders coming. Show, sure, amen. Come on up here. And uh, I'm going to preach too. And I'm going to stay within the time. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we're sending the word out to the world. We're not afraid. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God. He's God at the school board meetings. He's God in the church. He's God in the streets. He's God everywhere. God bless these elders. Oh my. Would be thank God. Let us call. Let us call Elder Amon Chuku for the praying women. For the morning women. Some women who know how to pray need to be standing up here. This, is, this ain't no man thing. This is a saint's thing. God uses men. God uses women. God uses people who are on fire for the Lord. God uses people who will declare his generation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who will declare his generation? We will. Who will declare his generation? We will. Who will speak God's truth? We will. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to him in the highest heaven. Glory to him in the highest heaven. Glory to him and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, O oh God, praying for our leader. God, we lift up Bishop Wooden. We lift up Elder Amanchuku. God, we lift up First Lady Wooden. We lift up Evangelist Amanchuku. God, be a hedge around him. Cover and protect him. In the name of Jesus, God, show yourself strong. Cover him in your blood. Give them strength, oh God, to continue this battle. Oh God, we need you. Lord, to show yourself strong. God, keep them. Protect them. Give them holy boldness as they proclaim your truth. Holy boldness as they stand for righteousness. Holy boldness as they proclaim your word. Oh God, have your way in them. Have your way in them. Have your way in them. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of Jesus cover them from the head ground of their head to the soles of their feet. God touch their voice, touch their bodies, heal them, oh God. Keep their home safe, their children safe, their grandchildren in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, raise them up, oh God, for your glory, for your glory. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. The blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, the blood of Jesus is against you. Oh, God, fill them once again. Oh, God, anoint them afresh. And God, we pray for the people of God, the upper room members, the people of God all across the globe that are standing in unity with this man of God, standing in unity with Elder Amanchuku. Oh, the will of God be done. The will of God be done. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Hey, God, we thank you. 
God, we send up praise. Hallelujah. Thanking you in advance, Lord, for what you've done, for what you will do. Ah, let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Let God arise. Let God arise. Hey, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our own, our own company. I'm, I'm, we're surrounded by our own company. You see that? Facebook, we, and we got folk out there. We got folk out there online. They're putting it on comments right now. There are people who are part of our own company. Preachers, teachers, bishops, leaders. Most importantly, we have the Lord. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Man of God, keep doing the work of the Lord. God have raised you up for such a time as this. And I love you. I'm proud of you. And I agree with him 100%. And those who will see this, that army of 400 that God has put on his heart to train, to organize. God is speaking to somebody right now from near and far. Saying, well, if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. Elder, how do they get in touch with you? If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can go to I know God dot US. I know God dot US. Daniel eleven thirty two says, and they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. And so now it's time for us to act like we know him. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go to Isaiah. 